Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're taking a look at one of my favorite decks in the format which is a Maskwood Nexus plus Skeletal Swarming deck which has some crazy cool synergies. So Maskwood Nexus is a 4-mana artifact, says creatures you control are every creature type and the same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield and for 3 mana we can tap Maskwood Nexus to create a 2-2 blue shapeshifter creature token with changeling so it also has every creature type and Maskwood Nexus combos very nicely with a few cards in our deck. One of those is Skeletal Swarming, the 5 mana enchantment, says each skeleton you control has Trample, attacks each combat if able, and gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of other skeletons we control. So if we have both Skeletal Swarming and Maskwood Nexus in play, all our creatures turn into skeletons, so they will all get Trample and that plus X plus O bonus. And then at the beginning of our end step, we create a tapped 1 1 black skeleton creature token. And if a creature died this turn, we get to create two of those tokens instead, which can happen both if opposing creatures die or if our own creatures die, which can easily happen with our sacrifice effects. So Skeletal Swarming plus Maskwood Nexus represents a ton of extra damage out of nowhere, especially once we start deploying multiple copies of Skeletal Swarming, since those plus X plus O bonuses will stack nicely. And then another great combo with Nexus is the one with Magda, Brazen Outlaw, which is the only reason we're playing red in this deck, just because Magda is so powerful with a lot of our different effects. The 2 mana 2 1 legendary Dwarf Berserker sends other dwarves we control get plus 1 plus 0, and whenever a dwarf we control becomes tapped, we create a treasure token. So if we have Maskwood Nexus in play, all our creatures turn into dwarves, they all get that plus 1 plus 0 bonus, and they make a treasure whenever they become tapped and we have a lot of ways to generate treasure in the deck even outside of Magda and if we can sacrifice five treasures we can search our library for an artifact or dragon card put that card onto the battlefield and then shuffle so if we don't have our Maskwood Nexus in play already we can potentially sacrifice five treasures and go get our Maskwood Nexus at instant speed even to maybe represent a ton of extra damage if we have a skeletal swarming in play and then if we already have Maskwood Nexus in play because Magda also lets us search for any dragon in our deck and Maskwood Nexus turns our creatures in the deck into dragons as well. We can basically search for any creature throughout the deck so that means we can find any card except for additional copies of Skeletal Swarming as we can even find our additional artifact here with Asika's Chariot which is also very synergistic in our deck. And then Magda of course is also great with our Sentinel as we can tap both to generate a mana and a treasure and that can potentially set up a turn 3 Skeletal Swarming and Magda is also great with our vehicle as we can crew the vehicle and still generate a treasure without putting Magda in harm's way. So a ton of great synergies throughout the deck, besides the Sentinel into Magda to lead to a turn 3 Skeletal Swarming, we can also go turn 1 Sentinel into a turn 2 Prosperous Innkeeper, which can also set up a turn 3 Skeletal Swarming, and then on top of that we can also play Shambling Ghast into a turn 2 Deadly Dispute, sacrifice Shambling Ghast generating a treasure token, and Deadly Dispute will make an extra treasure, and that can also set up a turn 3 Skeletal Swarming. So our deck can also ramp quite nicely thanks to all those treasure tokens, so a ton of great synergies and then to top it off we also have Skullport Merchant as an extra dwarf so it combos with Magda even outside of the Maskwood Nexus and then we can also pay one on a black to sacrifice another creature or treasure to draw a card so that gives us a nice sacrifice outlet and card draw engine. So let's quickly scan through the rest of the deck here. At 1 mana we mentioned Shambling Gas, the 1-1 one, one, that when it dies can either give a creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn or we can create a treasure token. So against aggressive decks it's a very good defensive one drop and we can always sacrifice it to create an extra treasure to help us ramp either by sacking it to a deadly dispute or to a merchant. Then we've got our Sentinel, which can help us ramp, great with Magda of course, as we can tap an untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color, and just generally helps us ramp into our more expensive cards. Then at two mana, we mentioned Magda, we also have the full playset of Prosperous Innkeeper, a 1-1 Halfling Citizen, that when it enters the battlefield creates a treasure, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control we gain one life, so that's also great with an active Skeletal Swarming, making plenty of creatures to gain life. 
and then Deadly Dispute, two mana instant as an additional cost we have to sacrifice an artifact or creature, so we can even sacrifice a treasure token to it, and then we get to draw two cards and create a treasure token. So besides being a great combo with Shambling Gas to ramp into turn 3 Swarming, it is also very good once we have Skeletal Swarming in play, as it gives us a way to potentially sacrifice one of our creatures to guarantee getting two skeletons end of turn instead of just one. Then at 3 mana we've got our Skullport Merchant, as we mentioned, a dwarf to go with Magda, and an extra Sacrifice outlet, and then also makes a treasure when it enters a battlefield, so that's another way to ramp into our more expensive cards ahead of schedule. A Seekast Chariot, a 4 mana legendary artifact vehicle, it's a 4 4 with a crew cost of 4, and when it enters a battlefield it is joined by a pair of cat tokens. And when the chariot attacks, we create a token that's a copy of target token we control. So it can copy cat tokens, can copy skeleton tokens from skeletal swarming, and can even copy treasure tokens to give us more mana, or to maybe get to the five treasures needed to sacrifice them to Magda to maybe find our Maskwood Nexus. And then of course our full playset of Maskwood Nexus and skeletal swarming to potentially deal a ton of extra trample damage. And then going over the mana base, we have all 12 pathways in the Junt colors, and then we have 4 basic forests, 3 basic mountains, 3 basic swamps, and 2 copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as an extra creature land that can turn into a 3-3 creature with menace and exile cards from the opponent's graveyard. The mana base can definitely still improve, so hopefully we'll get some dual lands in the upcoming Innistrad expansion. But for now, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's not gonna cut it. Don't have our Dispute to go with Ghast, no Magda to go with Sentinel, and Double Nexus, kind of awkward. So we'll take a Mulligan, this is better. Now we will need to find something to sack to the Dispute if we want to ramp into Swarming. So our best draw would be turn one Shambling Ghast, but uh, we'll see what we pick up. Another Swarming, so not a whole lot going on for now. Opponent a mill deck. Involving Wilds gonna mills for six with that rune crab. Alright, we better find a creature here, just a land. Well, I don't know if turn four Nexus, turn five swarming is gonna be fast enough. Cram session gets environmental sciences. Well, at least we're guaranteed a turn five skeletal swarming, so that's good. And two copies of Swarming do represent a lot of extra damage. So down to 39 cards. Can have a quick look through the graveyard. Swarming resolves, makes a skeleton. Next turn I could go Merchants, maybe sack the treasure to dispute, but... Probably still better off playing the second swarming. Alright, Demilich. Can maybe replay some mill cards out of the graveyard. Seeker's Chariot is interesting. So I don't have the mana to go merchant into a Seeker's Chariot. But I don't hate playing the Chariot here. We'll pump up my skeleton a bunch. And we'll make it so they can't easily ambush it. So my cat tokens are now 5-2 tramplers. And there's a hideous laughter. Mills us for a bunch. 21 cards remain. And the Demi-Lich is going to attack. Replace Tasha Sidious Laughter. So they're hoping to mill us out here. And they almost succeeded, five cards remain. Alright, so I can take four and then just hit them back with as much damage as possible. And with a second skeletal swarming, we might be able to do so. And with a land here. Still one mana short of going Merchant into Swarming 
if I want to have the Swarming in play before damage, because of course I could copy my treasure token with Chariot as well. So I think playing another Swarming is still probably my best bet. And then I can maybe crew Chariot's attack and then copy an extra Skeleton, which is probably going to deal more damage here. All right, GG's. Opponents at minus 23, although they did get pretty close to milling us. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? It's not amazing, but it's got some potential with Nexus turning our creatures into dwarves. We can potentially make a lot of treasure and put Magda to good use. Our hand's great if we find Skeletal Swarming. Jasper Sentinel also quite good. Might be worth playing before Magda if we suspect our opponent's gonna have a blocker for the 2 1 here. So let's do that. Alright, opponent does have Kalein to make a treasure. And an eye twitch, that's fine. Alright, back of Magda, it's good insurance. So, could cast Mask with Nexus. What happens if we do that? Then next turn I can play Magda. I think I'm still better off going Magda first. Guarantee making a treasure, maybe the opponent spends their turn killing Magda. And we have a replacement ready. I twitch hits for two. And a shambling ghast. Plus a second one. Alright. So play Nexus. And then probably don't want to attack with Shambling Ghast, even though we would make a treasure. Because then our Magda dies. I think I would rather save it here. And then we can just make two treasure end of turn, untap, and have enough treasure to search for any creature or artifact in our deck. Which is probably going to be a Seeker's Chariot first. Take three. Skyclave Shades, acceptable. Innkeeper is a draw. So we have a lot of options. Can even activate Mask with Nexus here to make a shapeshifter. So I think we'll just pass. And then I can get my chariots at instant speed. And then chariots can also help me tap my creatures to make more treasure. Right, gold span. It's gonna deal a bit of damage here. Alright, so in response to all of this, I will start making treasure. Get chariots. Make a shapeshifter. And then I can still crew the chariots, which will make even more treasure. Let's say we tap like this. I guess I could crew another time to get a second chariot. So we're kind of going off here. There we go, get another one. 
I guess it is legendary, so it should accrue itself to the ability to make an extra treasure. That's okay, I'll keep the first one. So could have had an extra treasure here is what I'm trying to say. But uh, I think we'll be just fine. So there are resolves. Go to blocks. Can block the shade. Block a shambling ghasts. All right. Let's see what they try to kill. A chariot, so we'll crew itself. And then I can still crew using all of these. Can over crew so we can tap three creatures at once. All right, so with an extra treasure, I would have been able to get another chariot there, but I think we'll be just fine. So Nexus makes a treasure. I can tap, make more treasure, get another chariot. And then, is there anything else I want to get? Probably want to move to combat here. Make some more treasure. So I can grab two more creatures with Magda or artifacts. Can get innkeepers if we want to gain life. All right, so is our opponent taking lethal? Four plus nine is 13, 15, so not quite lethal. So I think what I'm gonna do is crew chariot to itself. And then step one, I'm gonna get another innkeeper. So we can gain more life. Seems better than Skullport Merchants. And then I can get another Innkeeper. I can tap both to Crew Chariots. And then I can get another Chariot. And that will gain me six life with triple innkeeper in play. So as you can see, it can get pretty messy once we get Magda and Maskwood Nexus going, but in a good way, as we get to make a ton of treasure, especially with chariots that can tap our creatures pretty much at will to make even more treasure and find all the remaining creatures and artifacts in the deck. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw and we've got Sentinel into Magda with a chariot, so hand looks great. As always, could use Skeletal Swarming, and in this case an extra land wouldn't hurt. Opponent Black Green foretells a card. Yeah, I think we still play Magda here, and then I can cast my Shambling Ghast as well to set up for Deadly Disputes. And hopefully Magda survives. Soul Shatter does take care of Magda, unfortunately. All right, so what do we want to do next? Cast Chariots, saving the treasure, maybe. Could see a Binding the Old Gods, deal with Chariot. Nope, gonna be a hunt for specimens. To get environmental sciences, to find a basic and gain two life. That's fine. Alright, still no black mana. Are we afraid of a sweeper is the question. I think I'm gonna make... A Skullport Merchant here. And then... 
Okay, and crew chariots. And in this case, I don't mind copying my treasure, just in case her opponent has some sweepers. And pass it back. No double black, at least. Multiple choice, if that works. All bounce shambling ghasts. And then maybe sacrifice the treasure to the disputes. Another sentinel. All right, we do need to find some action here. Can crew chariots. Attack. And this time I'm okay copying the cat. And then probably want to play another chariots. Behold for two mana. And a binding to get rid of the chariots. So I can make a black mana here. I'll sacrifice a sentinel maybe to keep digging. Ooh, Magda plus Masquid Nexus. Well, let's go. So, step one, Magda. I guess we'll just use the treasure here. And attack. All our creatures get plus one plus zero oh from Magda. And that's a lot of treasure. Points at four. Pass it back. And we can find another chariot at instant speed if needed. Koma's not gonna save them here. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is missing black mana. Can make it with a Magda potentially. Which combos with our merchant. It's not ideal, is it? I think I gotta take a mulligan. Alright, this is much, much better. Innkeeper's guaranteed to make treasure to ramp into chariots. Although, Magda plus chariot is awesome. And then, kinda wants skeletal swarming. So I'll get rid of Innkeeper, even though it's a little greedy. Put into goblin deck. So if we want to play chariots, we might have to lose Magda. They might not want to trade for the battle cry goblin, so I feel okay attacking into it. And if they trade, that's also fine. Play Chariot. So now we've got a decent chance of playing our Skeletal Swarming, as we can make a treasure with Magda, and then copy the treasure with Chariot. And then we're just missing Masquid Nexus, which Magda can eventually find as well. Alright, so Chariot's Cruise eats the Battle Cry Goblin. Okay, 
So let's screw here. I'll leave the cat on defense. They might have a pair of goblins here, which is fine. Enthusiastic study. Alright, not the pump spell I was expecting, but that also works. Gets expanded anatomy. Okay, so should be able to do some damage. Can play a second skeletal swarming. And then copy my skeleton as her opponent packs it in. So yeah, let's see what the optimal play would have been. Play or land, I can crew chariot using cat token Magda, make a treasure, have five mana. So that's technically enough to cast skeletal swarming. So then my skeletons get double the plus X plus O bonus, chariot attacks, copies a skeleton, so now I have two. So that starts adding up. And then I basically just need to survive one turn with double charger in play, which seems doable. And then the following turn will have a million skeletons with a million power and that should be enough to win the game. Or if we want to play it more defensively, we can potentially start gaining life with Innkeeper, so we had that option available if maybe our life total was a little bit lower. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, fine hand. Featuring turn one Gast, turn two Dispute. Now that we drew Mask with Nexus, Magda and Skeletal Swarming are both exciting draws. And Shambling Gas also good against an aggressive deck with turn one Monk. Right, three three Monk gets in there. Second so Shumblock with a Ghast and then still dispute. Put on the green whites. Maybe some sort of Magecraft's aggressive deck. They might end up giving the Monk Trample to still deal its damage. There's a Swarming, which we can cast next turn already. So don't mind if I do. Turn 3 Skeletal Swarming, turn 4 Masquid Nexus, although possible I'm better off playing some other creatures first. Mavinda can replay Guiding Voice, which can give them access to Containment Breach to destroy the Swarming, so hopefully that doesn't happen. For now, I think I like Innkeeper into Skullport Merchants. Give us some warm bodies, start gaining a bit of life. And then our Masquid Nexus is going to be much more impactful if we have a few creatures in play. The skeleton is going to run into Mavinda. Either way, we're going to end up with two skeletons end of turn. Spirit, so looks like I'm gonna get to keep my skeletal swarming for at least one more turn. Environmental sciences. And take six. Alrighty, so I should have enough mana to play both Skullport Merchant and Masquid Nexus. I expect my opponent to trade their 1 1 for my Innkeeper, take 15. 
And then we'll get two skeletons end of turn. Alright, so we're looking good. Mavinda for guiding voice to maybe get the containment breach like we discussed to destroy the skeletal swarming, but the damage has been done. Literally and figuratively. Alright, Putin going for the loyal warhound instead here. Means they've kind of given up on the idea of casting that containment breach this game. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and love seeing this hand. Innkeeper, Swarming and Mask with Nexus. Could use one more extra creature to bridge the gap. But probably gonna try and cast a turn for Skeletal Swarming and then Mask with Nexus on the following turn and there's a Merchant, perfect. So, Merchant into Swarming into Mask with Nexus, facing Paladin class, so an aggressive white deck. Very fast deck, can definitely overrun us before we establish our powerful skeleton engine. Black Whites, so it looks like a Cleric a life gain deck instead. Still gonna cast Merchant and then could play Sentinel as well, I suppose. Next turn can make mana kind of pays for itself. Alright, we're just a Magda away from going completely crazy. A Rollmocker? Alright, let's see what that name's Cleric makes sense. Another Sentinel I can play. So, make a mana. And then I think I'm okay casting Sentinel. Will give me a bigger board once we deploy my squid Nexus next turn. And hopefully they can't remove our enchantment. Oof, Elite Spellbinder is going to mess with our plan somewhat. So now I won't be able to attack for as much damage the turn we play Nexus. Although I can still cast it with double Sentinel at least. So yeah, I think I'm fine casting the Mask with Nexus main phase. That does mean that my remaining creature is going to be forced to attack, but at 4 toughness I don't mind if the merchants trades for two of the opponent's creatures. Could have also decided to keep something back on defense by casting Nexus second main. Either way will be fine. Opponent does go for the trade, which does mean we get two skeletons instead of one. Gain some life, and yeah, if they can't deal with our enchantment, they're gonna be in trouble. Elder Fang Disciple discards Shambling Ghast. I can live with that. Oof, Masked Vandal. Yeah, and that'll do it. Can blow up our Skeletal Swarming by getting rid of a creature, which is probably why they blocked. So we could have played around Masked Vandal by maybe playing the Mask with Nexus second main and not attacking. Now the good news is the skeletons no longer are forced to attack, so I can kind of keep them back. Start activating Mask with Nexus a bunch. But uh, yeah, I would rather have a uh, skeletal swarming in play, that's for sure. So 
don't really have any amazing attacks. We'll just activate Nexus end of turn. And then hope to top deck another Skeletal Swarming or Magda. Magda would definitely win us the game here. Spellbinder can be blocked by Sentinel. Another Masked Vandal going after Mask with Nexus now too. Opponents not having any of it. Alright, now we're just kind of a, a sad creature deck. Probably get a trade for this Cleric. But that still leaves the Paladin class and Rumwalker as problematic cards. So, there is an argument for not trading the Skeletons in case we do top deck another Skeletal Swarming. Maybe that's my best chance at this point. Do I just take six? Yeah, I mean, maybe that's our best bet. Well, speak of the devil. I do have ample skeletons in play. So these can all attack. Make another skeleton end of turn. And I can uh, gain some life with Innkeeper. And the sentinels can jump. Alright, if they don't have another masked vandal, we should be fine. This has been quite a swingy game. But a lucky top deck later, and we're still in the game. Glad I didn't trade away my board for the cleric. Gotta think about, you know, our outs of how do we actually win the game instead of how do we prevent losing the game right now. Skyclave Hierophants, 3-3 three, three Lifelinker. Cleric attacks, Spellbinder attacks. So we'll have to do some math. Alright, so let's say we take 10 damage and fall to 1, because I don't think there's anything they can have for single black in terms of bomb spells, so we should be safe. So we're at 1, we get to untap, attack with a team. Opponent has 13 toughness back, including a 3-powered life linker. So it's kind of like they have 16 toughness at 8 life, means we need to deal 24 damage. And just our skeletons plus our changeling is 26 trample damage. So that should be enough for lethal. So yeah, we can uh, take it here. Or we could chump, I don't think it matters too much. Sentinel doesn't really change the math. So if our calculations were correct, our opponent should be dead. And we either have one-powered creatures or trampling creatures, so... There's no way they can block differently to save them here. Just make sure to trample over. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, I've got a very promising hand. Great if we find Magda or Mask with Nexus. But even turn 3 Skeletal Swarming of Innkeeper and Sentinel, it's not too bad. I'll play another Sentinel here. Opponent passes, and we'll play Skeletal Swarming.
And I'll hit for one with the Sentinel if they want to trade. That's fine by me. Opponent going for the Innkeeper, perhaps. Nope, just wants the treasure. Well, we do get two skeletons now. Merchant gives us a sacrifice outlet to guarantee two skeletons per turn. And red black doesn't really have many answers to enchantments. It's going to be an improvised weaponry to try and stem the bleeding, taking out a skeleton. Does make a treasure, so next turn we could see Goldspan Dragon, or we could cast another Skeletal Swarming here. That seems pretty good. They are quite strong in multiples. One second there's a one-powered Skeleton, and the next second they turn into an army of five-powered Skeletons. And it's only going to get better here. Although it's going to get worse from our opponent's perspective. They do have Goldspan Dragon, so still four mana, second main available. Maybe a Sweeper to clear the board can save them. Or just spot removal for skeletons. Right, Shatter Skull Smashing. Actually quite effective. Back down to one powered skeleton. So I want to be able to play Merchant and sacrifice a creature. Could sacrifice Shambling Ghast as well. Yeah, I guess it works. So make a mana using the Shambling Gas that's about to die. And then we can uh, make another treasure. And then I'll still have the Merchant's ability available in the opponent's turn. Get to make four Skeletons end of turn. Gain a bunch of life. They're all nine powered now. This Goldspan Dragon's gonna need to do some heavy lifting. Alright, artists. Maybe your opponent can storm off here and kill us on the spot, who knows? Couple pump spells. Just a hit for four. And another weaponry on a skeleton, which we can sacrifice. That way the weaponry fizzles and they don't get their treasure. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Well, we got to see our deck in action. Got to see Magda plus Maskwood Nexus without a skeletal swarming. Good to see Maskwood Nexus plus Swarming without Magda. Don't think we quite got all three in play at the same time, but you can only imagine what uh, shenanigans you can get up to with all three in play. So the deck definitely has a little bit of jankiness to it. Sometimes you'll draw the Maskwood Nexus without any of the other combo pieces, and it's not going to look all that impressive, especially once you start drawing multiples. But the deck also has a pretty solid backbone of some proven combos like Shambling Gas plus Deadly Dispute, or Magda plus Sentinel, or Magda plus Chariot, and then Chariot with all the token synergies. Even happen to have our 3 mana Dwarf plus Magda, which work nicely. So yeah, there's just a ton of synergy in the deck, and if you manage to pull off the various combos, the deck feels unstoppable. So it's a ton of fun to play, even if it might not be the most competitive deck in Standard. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.